many people say, you know, we've got best practices. You know, you know, what do the best in class do? And I challenge people to say, you know, supply chain management is 30 years old, but I still, still think we're in evolution, and I'm not clear that we know what best practices are. And part of the effort of the supply chain planning benchmarking activity, which is, I think, the deepest offering that you'll see in the market, is to really understand the adoption, the value, and the evolution of companies as they approach supply chain planning. It's very focused on demand planning and supply planning, at both tactical supply and production planning to look at the evolution and adoption of these technologies. So some people might say, well, who is Supply Chain Insights and why are we doing this? Our focus is to be an independent supply chain analyst and research company. So we're not a consulting company. What we do is we triangulate the market and we try to bring independent advice to line of business users. We write for line of business users and we want to make it actionable and objective. By independent, we call a spade a spade. Uh, our revenues do not come from uh, more than 5% from any company and we try to balance our revenues so that no more than 50% of our revenues come from technology vendors. We want to be able to write what's happening in the market. So when we think about uh, you know, research. You know, many people will use the term research lightly, uh, but we believe that it's a very deep topic. And so we start all of our research projects with a hypothesis, and we try to combine quantitative and qualitative research coupled with financial benchmarking to really try to unearth new insights for the supply chain leader. All of the supply chain respondents are always known, but we keep them confidential. Unlike other models where the respondents' names are shared, we report all the data in aggregate. However, our research is based upon quantitative methods that we are refining and developing, and we believe that they're some of the strongest in the industry. We share our research in blog posts, podcasts, reports, and webinars, and we make money because we're not a nonprofit through advisory services, which are different than consulting, speeches, our annual event, which is on September 10th and 11th, public training, and custom research. So it's different than the conventional analyst model that's more focused on the IT audience or the networking model that assumes that we know what best practices are or the business development model where the term research is used, but really it's used as a business development model for technology providers. So there are three kinds of research that we're going to bring together in this new offering that I'm going to share with you today. Quantitative surveys of people that are using planning, financial analysis, and qualitative interviews. And then what we're going to be able to do is tie that together into uh, our definition of supply chain excellence. So before I get started on the benchmarking planning service, let me just go through our belief statements. We believe that the supply chain is a complex system with complex processes with increasing complexity. And as we mine the data of uh, 20 years of supply chain financial ratios, which we would be glad to help anyone to compare themselves to their peer group based upon the database that we are constantly working with, we find that the processes are very complex and they're nonlinear, and that the ratios are not very well understood. So we want to help companies to build resilient and predictable processes that are balanced across the set to maximize value. And I am a strong believer in supply chain planning and actually helped in the development in the 1990s with advanced planning systems. But as I get into the data and I look at the evolution of companies and the impact on corporate performance, I want to understand why we have not gotten more value and year-over-year -year strength against peer group of companies that I think do this well. So in the book that I published called Bricks Matter, I published this drawing, which I call the Effective Frontier. It was my first representation of this complex system. And I believe we want, as supply chain leaders, to drive profitable growth, that we have to trade off revenue and cost of goods and working capital. And we have new 
uh, goals with corporate social responsibility, and we've got to maximize asset strategies. And underneath that, which is where our planning systems evolved, we're trying to maximize the value for customer service and inventory and cost, and one of the levers that we use is forecast accuracy. However, one of the things that I find is that many times people will implement forecasting systems but not use the data effectively. The other thing I find is there is no good benchmarking service that goes across companies for forecast accuracy that really looks at the characteristics of the forecast, the forecastability, the techniques that are used, and the ability to tie the forecast to supply planning. So we want to help to try to bridge this gap. So I don't use this framework anymore because I found that I could not find forecast accuracy data, case fill data is overstated with a positive bias, and I couldn't find corporate social responsibility data. So in working with my research team, we built the second model called the Effective Frontier, and this is where we actually mine the corporate financial data to look at the impact of growth, profitability, cycles, and complexity. And we find that complexity has increased in organizations, either it's complexity in product platform or shortening life cycles or volatility in markets, and that at the intersection of profitability and cycles where we should be getting a strong benefit in the use of applied technologies, but nine out of ten companies are stuck. So we want to help. We want to bring the data that we have been working on, our understanding of things like correlations to market capitalization, which we did over the last two years where we actually took market capitalization data and we looked at which of the ratios actually closely correlate. And then we built what I call orbit charts, which allow us to contrast different ratios and to look at periods of time and the evolution of corporate financial metrics. So let me tell you a story. In the 1990s, I worked for an advanced planning system company, and we would go into accounts and we would sell the accounts if they bought advanced planning systems, demand, supply, manufacturing, but they would improve their business. And at that point in time, I was pretty naive. I thought that we would see the results skyrocket towards what feared the best scenario. But what we find is companies like Dow, who's represented here, will often make progress on the first two years or the third year, but then they'll start to see some processes where we actually see them turn over on themselves and that they kind of stall out. And so what we want to understand in this benchmarking process is how has the impact of technology impacted corporate results over time, and who's done it best, and how have they adopted technologies to look at year-over-year -year improvement. And to do this, one of the things we've invested in is building what we call the Supply Chain Index. In the Supply Chain Index, we take the orbit charts, which this is an orbit chart to go back, where we contrast two uh, metrics, and we look at the progress and the pattern over time and we look at the intersection of how the company is done on return on invested capital and the reason that we picked ROIC versus ROA or RONA is because of the higher correlation with market capitalization. So we're looking at the intersection of return on invested capital and revenue growth and we're looking at the intersection of inventory turns and operating margin and then we're looking at the tightness of the pattern and we've been working on building this for all public companies by NAX codes or industry segments. And the reason we're doing this is because we see very different patterns by company by, within an industry. And we wanted to have the ability to compare little companies against big companies. We wanted to be able to enable companies to select their peer groups because, you know, when we're in a peer group, sometimes we're working with a conglomerate like is J&J a medical device company or a consumer products company or a pharmaceutical company? Well, we all know they're all three, and so we can't just put them in one max code. We've got to really be able to be flexible. So the index framework allows us to look at supply chain improvement 
of companies by peer group and to look at balance, which is the intersection of return on invested capital and growth, strength, which is the improvement at the intersection of inventory turns and operating margin, resiliency, which looks at how tight the pattern is, and to be able to get peer rankings, to be able to get feedback from supply chain leaders and what we call our supply chain circle, our shaman circle. So it allows us to be able to build the index by industry, and you can see here, and we've put a lot of data into SlideShare, and we will be publishing a number of reports that allows us to look at supply chain improvement. This is in a backdrop or first stage of the work that we want to do on supply chain planning benchmarking. One of the things that we have found is many companies have implemented technologies, demand, tactical supply, production planning, and they come to us and they say, I'm not getting value, or could you point us, Laura, to a company that has value? Because the other thing that we do is we do a lot of networking. And one of the things that I find is there is not a comprehensive study of supply chain planning effectiveness in the industry. I just finished, and I'll be writing a report on planning methodologies, the time to implement a plan, whether people are happier with best-of-breed providers or the ERP expansionists, and that report's coming up. And that's a quantitative report, and I feel really good about that. But I think that we need to go one step further, that we need to combine the financial ratio data, the work we've done on the supply chain index, along with quantitative survey data of how do planners feel about their technology, along with qualitative research and interviews of supply chain leaders about how they feel about planning, to provide unique insights to really provide a sharper focus on what is the value of demand, supply, and sales and operations planning processes. So our timing is to kick this off now and to finish this project in December 2014. Companies that participate with us will be assessing business performance from multiple angles. At no point in time will we allow a technology provider to participate, and this is not sponsored by a technology provider. The second thing is we will never reveal individual responses of either a respondent on the survey or a company. All results will be reported in aggregate. So, you know, those of you who know me know that I write for Forbes, I write on my blog, I write reports. I will never use this data without a company's permission. And uh, I will always ask, and the only thing I will publish out of this data is aggregate information. So this is a focused effort to help us to bring together quantitative qualitative and financial data along with supply chain performance. So here's what we would like to do. We would like to use quantitative data to find out the views of planners, the people that are really using technology, by the type of technology, by where they are in the world, to look at the ease of use of analytics, to look at satisfaction with reporting and optimization, to understand what they're really using. Are they using Excel? How they view the organization's progress on agility and alignment and where they are in satisfaction of both the planning types and by region. The other thing we will be studying is organizational design. People that participate in the study will share with us the organization charts, the training programs, their turnover data of planners, the number of open positions, the salaries, and the tenure. What we want to do is understand how things like supply chain centers of excellence are designed or how HR career paths affect planning effectiveness. The other thing we'll be evaluating is corporate performance. So we will be plotting and using the supply chain index against this data as an objective measure to look at the intersection of things like days of inventory, mean absolute percent error, bias, case fill rate, return on net assets, return on invested capital, growth patterns. And we'll be doing this for different periods. The other thing we'll be doing is interviewing at least five influential leaders in the planning process by organization. 
to look at their perception of accuracy and plan, their beliefs around organizational fit, their overall satisfaction with a particular vendor, and how they feel about their planning processes. It's our goal to contrast the views of the leaders with the planners to be able to look at how that varies by region, how that varies by industry, how that varies by technology, how that varies by deployment methodology. The second thing we'll be looking at is technology. Which version of the solutions are they using? Which technology? How many instances? What's the frequency of planning? How have they customized the technology? And as an output, we'll be looking at things like planning productivity. How many planners do we need? Organizational alignment. Is there an impact on how we design and the ability for a company to be agile or to drive balance? What is the relationship of planning to corporate performance? What's the gap between user perception and leadership? How effectively have companies used IT technology? What is the impact on corporate performance? And what is planning effectiveness in demand and supply? Because to participate, companies have to share their demand plan, their supply plan, their reduction plan, and their case fill numbers so that we can actually look at real numbers. One of the things I've found in benchmarking in the past is you can never ask someone to tell me forecast accuracy because we all do different uh, self-reporting. And so what we'll be getting in this study is raw numbers. So in the quantitative phase, what we'll be doing is developing a survey based upon the input of the founding members to basically go out to the people in the survey and to survey their planners. So a company in the survey will be able to see the belief statements of their planners on the effectiveness of supply chain planning versus their comparative peers and based upon different technologies. We'll also be doing divisional analysis within the company to look at the orbit chart. This is inventory turns versus case fill. This is blinded. This is a real company where we did divisional analysis to look at our companies making progress on what we call the effective frontier of being able to drive balance in these metrics. So the input data we'll be using is we will be reviewing three months of demand planning output. We'll ask companies to give us their data. We'll also be doing analysis of sales and operations planning documentation for the last three months. We'll also ask the team if we can participate as a silent review on their SNOP processes to hear the processes and to review the discipline of the processes. And we'll review the forecast value add results if the company is actually doing forecast value add as a process. We'll also do an analysis of the tactical supply planning plans. In the process of doing the quantitative survey where we will tender the surveys to the planners, we'll be doing analysis of planner data around satisfaction, use of technologies, and current state of processes. And we'll ask each person in our survey to bring at least 30 respondents per company to allow us to analyze the results. We'll also be doing the benchmarking of the financial data, and we'll be trying to drive causality and correlation between what we find in the quantitative data and what we find in the planning process review of the data. In parallel, we'll be uh, doing qualitative analysis of supply chain leaders with at least five leaders in the company to understand the importance performance of planning based upon their views and contrasting it to the supply chain planning team. We'll also be looking at organizational details, things like time for implementation, number of planners, training programs, organizational reporting, and how companies implemented the technology and how they've driven results. Now, the output data will tell us you know, the gap analysis between leader perspectives and planner belief by industry by country or region of the world. We'll also be looking at the effectiveness of demand planning. We'll be contrasting the analysis of forecastability of how difficult is it to actually do a demand plan for this company and the actual results for bias and PE made and the connections of the changes in the business outcome for margin inventory, customer service, growth, and ROIC and RONA and looking at the time to plan and how long it takes to run a plan and the ability to do what-if analysis. 
In addition, we'll be looking at the effectiveness of supply planning. What's the balance between S and OP? Are we balanced between S and OP in the quantitative studies? What are the definitions of the flush and freeze periods and the number of changes that happen in the freeze duration? Are companies using constraints and what-if analysis? How effectively do they feel these are working? How are they managing inventory, cycle, seasonal, safety stock, promotional? And what are the write-offs? And so what is the effective use of capital? And looking at inventory turns and manufacturing changes. We'll also be looking at the effectiveness of you know, the larger supply chain planning processes on agility, resiliency, and balance as it's assessed by employees, but also on the effective frontier on metrics. And we'll be looking for organizational insights. You know, how are we bringing planning, planners into an organization? Are they entry level and do they turn every two years or is there a career path? And is there a supply chain center of excellence? And how well is it accepted by the organization? And how happy are people with technology? So people that participate in the study will get a personalized report at the end of the study. Who can participate? Manufacturers that are greater than one billion. I know that we have some people on the phone that are from the hospital industry or distribution industry. At this time, I'm going to really focus on manufacturers and uh, you can follow the data. They have had to have deployed an advanced planning system for demand and supply and they have to have had a planning group in process for at least five years. And they have to have an executive team that has endorsed planning as a direction. Now, in the study, there are paying members, which are called founding members, and there are participating members, which participate but do not pay money. So the founding members, which have to be manufacturers, they cannot be technology providers, will get input into the study design, and they'll get ability to get custom cuts of the data for regions and divisions. However, at no time will they see individual companies or individual data. So, for example, if Colgate and Procter & Gamble were participating in the study, Colgate would not see Procter & Gamble's numbers. They would see aggregate consumer packaged goods numbers, or they would see North America manufacturer numbers, but you would never be able to see individual companies. And they would be able to get custom reports. The Participating members will participate in the study. They'll get no custom data cuts, and they'll get a standard report, which I think will be very valuable, but they'll actually be working at the corporate level of performance. So we won't be doing data cuts on individual supply chains or regions. So there are two types of companies. It is a very deep uh, supply chain planning benchmarking process. And the reason that we're doing this is because I don't think we have anything in the industry that helps us to really quantify the impact of advanced planning. So if you're interested, here are the next steps. We're kicking off the project now with the webinar. We're defining the scope, and we'd ask you if you're interested to assign a project manager. We would talk with you if you want to be a founding member or a participating member. If you're a technology provider, we would love to have you socialize the concept with your base of people and send the contact information to us, and then we will take it from there. At no time will we share the information with the technology provider during the process. In late June and early July, we'll refine the questionnaire and begin the process of sending the survey to the participants. So we would ask each of the companies to pave the way with their HR department so that the supply chain planners know that this is an okay survey to take, that their survey responses will never be shared individually so that they don't have to worry about reprisal by their leaders, and that we are an accepted methodology and what's going to happen with the data. Then we will schedule leadership interviews and begin to collect the technology data and listen to the sales and operations planning processes and begin gathering the data and output from the demand plans, the supply plans, and the SNOP process. In the September through December periods, we'll be doing all of the tabulations, the correlations, the causality, and developing the final report. And in January, we will host a networking session that will be 
paid, it, there will be a cost to join the networking session with other participants to learn the impact of the study and also to share the findings. So it's a deep piece of research. And you know, if you're interested, what we would love to have you do is to set up a call so we can define the scope. Do you want to be a founding member or a participating member? And what does that really mean? What will we be asking for in terms of getting the plan output? What is the freeze duration? What is the flush duration? What do all these terms mean? So we want to be sure that we get really clear on the methodology and what's required by you. Then we would ask for each company who's in the study to assign a project manager. This would be someone who would be our central point of contact that would get all of the documents and they would socialize the concepts within the organization. They would work with us to set up the interviews for the executives and to arrange silent participation in the SNOP process. They would also work with us with their legal teams to be sure that we had an NDA that the company felt secure with and that all people within the company understood the confidentiality of the information and the fact that we were only going to report in aggregate. We would then begin gathering the planning documents in the period and we will also ask for the details on footprint, data model, software release, planning cycles to be able to look at how companies have deployed technologies. We'll also want to have some open dialogue with the HR department on organizational design, number of planners, reporting structures, and training programs. And then what we will do is we will look at case fill rate by business based upon the scope, and we'll put the data together. So with that, I just want to go through some questions that we've gotten from group members. I've got a question about uh, a founding member and a participating member and how to get more information. So, you know, as you think about these two roles, right, a founding member would actually pay to be part of the study and a participating member uh, will participate in the study but won't actually pay. You know, when you think about both of these roles, there's a couple, I think, of key points that I want to be sure that you're clear on. We will ask all participating members to sign an agreement with us that they will provide the data. So this process requires some pretty arduous and clear project management to be sure that we can get all the data. And also to be sure that they pave the way with their leadership team to be sure that companies know when the responses are going to come through and you know, it's a person within the organization that, you know, if there are any questions, you can bounce it off of. The founding members will have the ability to ask specific questions. So, for example, I have one founding member who really wants to understand about analytics and in-memory analytics and what people are using for analytics tools. So they'll get the ability to put that question in the survey. Another company really wants to understand uh, productivity of planners. Uh, uh, another company wants to understand uh, how effectively are people training uh, planners in China and Brazil. Those are three very different objectives. But we will have 30 questions in the quantitative stu study, and they will be able to mold that study and to be able to really derive insights themselves. I had another company who said, well, what if we go together and we both agree that we'll share the data and we want to be founding members, but, you know, we share data across these two organizations all the time. If both companies agree to share the data and they sign mutual acceptance letters, then we'll share the data, but we'll only do that if the companies agree. So that's sort of a good distinction between uh, – founding members or uh, participating members. Now, I have a question about, is this study restricted to North American markets, or do you plan to extend the scope to include businesses and markets overseas? We feel this is a global study. Uh, so any manufacturer anywhere in the world, greater than one billion, that meets the criteria of having an advanced planning system and has deployed the technologies and is willing to participate, we want to include them in the study. And as part of the study, we will understand uh, what their network is, both demand and supply, where they're doing business, and what their network is. So 
Thank you very much, you know, for asking the question. Sometimes people say to me, well, does this include a European companies? And I say, well, what is a European company, right? Because when I look at companies, you know, we deal with a lot of multinationals with companies greater than one billion. But, yes, we want this to be global, and we want it to represent the regional differences in planners. We want to understand regional global governance because those are very different models as we look at sales and operations planning and supply planning and demand planning. So it will include that uh, topic. Now, I have another question around, you know, what does this final report look like, right? And the final report, imagine that you've got a document of about 40 pages. That is a custom report for you, which looks at your quantitative data in the sections that I've talked about, about organizational insights, technology insights, uh, the gaps between the quantitative surveys of the planners and the leadership team, the corporate performance of how you've done against peer groups versus uh, others, and also how you have done on resiliency at the intersection of forecast accuracy, case fill rate, demand and supply. So, um, you know, if people have uh, a need to, you know, and we hope that people want to move forward on next steps, you know, what we'd love to do is to connect with you. And here is my contact information. I'm Laura Ciceri at SupplyChainInsights.com. I am the founder of the company. I would love to have you participate in this deep and, I think, holistic evaluation of planning, planning processes, planning organizations, and the impact on corporate performance. I appreciate you joining us today, and if there are any last-minute questions, I don't see any, thank you very much for joining, and we will be writing more about this on our blogs, and we look forward to connecting with you soon. Thanks very much.